it had to be a very dramatic shift in his mind to be able to go from, you know, 10,000 miles an hour and this path of being this prophet and suddenly you're in prison and everyone hates you. Um, yeah. What, how do you think he processed that? How does someone like that process that? Because we know narcissists have a very difficult time processing reality when it comes to being called out on their stuff. And obviously he got called out to a very extremist ex extent to the point of you might be killed by the government because you went so far down this road. Yeah, my guess is he's very anxious right now and probably on some kind of anti-anxiety medication <laughs> uh, to keep from beating his head against the bars. Yeah, this has got to be an incredible downfall for him. I mean, we see him in the courtroom looking very depressed. Chad Daybell just, like, just aloof. You never see him smile. You never see him really express any emotion, no matter what is going on in front of him. Um, is that something where... It, it's kind of the dissociation. Was he? Was that part of what enabled him to to carry out such a horrible thing, allegedly, of killing these kids, just disassociating from reality? And I would imagine maybe still using that to this day as all these things are laid out in front of him? Certainly could be an element of dissociation. Yeah, he's probably pretty talented at it and can probably pull it in when he needs it as a defense mechanism. But I really mean it. He may be on, on medication a lot yeah. of People in prison, they they start to nut up and they have psychiatrists on staff and they they give them something to calm them down. So he very likely is on something. Many of his kids uh, stood by his side. We saw that in an interview last year. Um, I don't know where they're at today. They haven't really spoken since. But we did see that uh, that that video of them in the car at the initial uh, arrest and very upset. Chad saying, you know, I'm not coming back. Go pay the mortgage. It's going to be on you going forward. Yeah. How do you think those kids are handling things today? It's it's just that's, I think, another one of the very, very sad things about this is that these are innocent children and their mother's dead. And this has just got to be absolutely devastating for them. I, I can't imagine how how they're coping, um, it's, you know, it's just so tragic. It's a nightmare for all the family members. How does one even begin to wrap their mind around that? I mean, they, they are adult children for the most part. Um, you know, if if someone's coming in, you know, I mean, <laughs> let's just uh, role play here for a second. Someone comes into you, Chad Daybell's my dad. Uh, you, you have an idea of everything that's going on from the media coverage and such. And they're completely broken up. They don't know how to move forward in life. I mean, what are the first steps in something like that for someone who's gone through such an enormous trauma? Yeah, because they basically have to rebuild their entire inner world about who are my parents, who were my parents, how in the world did did we get there? So there's a lot of deconstructing of what they thought reality was versus what reality has turned out to be. And yeah, there's no quick fix for it. One of the things that come up comes up for children of people who commit awful crimes is we all integrate aspects of our parents into ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just normal. That's how kids develop. And when they find out that they have a parent with this hidden, awful dark side, they can't help but worry, what does this mean about me? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of work to be done about rebuilding their sense of, you know, I am a separate person from my dad in mm -hmm. this case. And how do I define my identity apart from who he has turned out to be? So it, it can take a long time. I mean, it's basically something that they're going to be having to sit with and think about and work on for the rest of their lives. It's very hard to have a parent who does something horrible. Do, do sometimes people uh, never quite come around to even accepting uh, what reality is? And, and you know, and, and is that better? I mean, if, as long as you're not the one that's out there committing yeah. the crimes, is it better sometimes to to just kind of, I guess, put your head in the sand and, yeah. and believe, well, he couldn't have done this, that he was wrongly yeah. accused, and just kind of move on with your life over this way yeah. versus trying to climb this mountain over here of just coming to grips with reality? 
Yeah, exactly. Reality is is too much for a lot of people in the world. I mean, we see that uh, all over the place. Mm -hmm. People self-medicating because reality is too overwhelming. We're going to watch TV and drink beer and not think about any of it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's a human coping mechanism. I don't know that it's the best coping mechanism, but it may be the best that some people can do. Yeah. I mean, especially in a case like this, just where it's so extreme yeah. to, to ever try to wrap one's mind around it. I, I can't imagine uh, being yeah. in that situation. No, no, it's, it just changes life forever. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts and especially Apple podcasts where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.